Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show where the only tool in the toolbox is the toolbox. Ratchet Deadlocked is the fourth and best game in the original Ratchet & Clank trilogy, shifting the series to focus on what it does best. Massively over-the-top weaponry, blowing up everything that moves, doesn't move, and is too afraid to move. It was only a matter of time before the wrench-only run was finally continued with the toughest game it's yet seen. Can you beat Ratchet Deadlocked with only the wrench? We must calibrate your battle suit's targeting matrix. First, look over at the hollow target on your left. Turn to face the hollow target on the right, then fire. Mission failed. Unlike the prior games, Deadlocked consists entirely of short challenges with their own specific goals and rules, and several of those missions don't even let you use the wrench to begin with. We're going into this run knowing from the very beginning it's impossible. I briefly considered making this a minimum shot run, but to keep things simple, I decided it would instead be best to go for minimum mission fails. Basically, we'll be trying to beat the game while using weapons in as few individual challenges as possible. As always, for the purposes of this run, all weapons in the weapons menu you are banned. Additionally, to keep the run interesting in the plentiful vehicle exclusive challenges, the guns and explosives on all vehicles and turrets are also banned. Everything else you can get your hands on is 100% allowed. Also, while it is normally our secret weapon, I'm gonna come out right now and declare co-op mode completely banned. Sorry, I was excited to use it too, but it's too powerful of a win button here. As long as both players don't die within a 5 second window, they have infinite respawns, which would trivialize almost the entire game. Before even starting the run, you'll also have to do a bit of prep time. I haven't addressed New Game Plus with the prior games because I usually prefer to start on a completely fresh save file. Deadlocked is an exception for one very tempting reason. Exterminator difficulty. If you have at least one cleared file, this difficulty is unlocked for all save files on the memory card, letting you start off on the hardest possible difficulty with absolutely no upgrades carried over because I crave pain. With the rules set and the masochism meter completely filled, let's get this run started. As covered earlier, the camera tutorial brings our mission failed count up to one instantaneously. Once we reach actual combat, you'll notice enemy shots are ridiculously strong and your face is ridiculously not. Your best damage dealer will be aerial hyperstrikes, which deal double damage with each hit and, if used at point-blank range, can hit enemies multiple times with a single attack. Once out of the battle tutorial, you'll meet the secret weapons that make this run feasible. Your combat bots, Merc and Green who are fully 100% allowed in this run. If there are too many enemies around, focus entirely on dodging enemy fire or find someplace safe to hole up and they'll gradually blow up the entire army for you. They also have our absolutely best offensive option, the very thankfully technically not a weapon, the Ravager. This baby takes a ridiculous long time to charge up, but when it goes off, it goes off, usually resulting in a total room wipe. But using it when you don't need to could mean hours of grinding to get it back later, so save it when you absolutely know you're gonna need it. But of course, there's no reason to lay on the cheese when you could just as easily skip the entire meal. Most challenges only have one specific win condition, usually either killing every enemy in a specific area or simply reaching a specific end location. In the latter case, you should always absolve the enemies of their sins and go the pacifist route. This is even more true now that we have Merc and Green, who are fully capable of turning the wrench cranks on their own. Plus, run far enough away and the enemies will apparently just turn themselves off, letting your bots turn the crank in peace. As an added bonus, once wrench cranks are activated, they remain active permanently. Even if you die along the way, you'll still have made progress. And as a double added bonus, once you finish a handful of missions, you'll have enough bolts to buy the shield link allowing your bots to cover each other in an impenetrable shield for an extra bit of insurance. In some vehicle missions, you're allowed to exit the vehicle just fine, but in others, you're completely locked in. In forced Landstalker missions, you'll have to rely entirely on melee combat. The Landstalker's legs deal damage to whatever they move through, and the healing pad can be used for infinite health refills. Since there's no time limit and all required targets are near ground level, you can gradually wear down enemy defenses until the way is clear. Just clearing the story missions won't be enough. You'll also have to earn dread points by playing semi-optional challenges to unlock new planets. Of course, many of these are either outright impossible wrench only or would take way too much effort. You can only play each challenge for points up to three times, worth one half and one quarter points successively, so you can't afford to be too picky. Thankfully, there's just barely enough points from the easier challenges available, letting us scrape by at every point gate with little extra effort. In the Serato Sprint Story Mission, you'll have to make your way past two turret checkpoints swarming with enemies. At the first checkpoint, jump around wildly to somehow miraculously not get murdered while Merkin Green hack the orbs. Ignore everything
everything and dash all the way to the end and jump around the right ledge. There's an invisible wall stopping us from jumping straight to the Puma where the level ends, but you're otherwise completely safe to wait for Merc and Green to successfully hack open the gate and loop around to the goal. In the last mission, you'll face several waves of Leviathans. They're one of the strongest and most lethal enemy types in the game, making this the first early game roadblock. Since each wave is directly tied to Merc and Green's progress hacking the surrounding orbs, cancel their hack as soon as anything spawns and clear the room before continuing. Once all the orbs are hacked, the King Leviathan will finally spawn in. Rather than actually fighting the thing, have Merc and Green throw out the Ravager and sit back to enjoy the fireworks. On planet Kronos, a ridiculous number of enemies keep the doors forward locked, and every couple missions you'll have to contend with increasingly difficult matches against the game's first boss, Shellshock. I managed to get up to and beat his first battle legit, but the next mission is just too cruel. There aren't any viable locations to let Merc and Green win themselves, and the enemies have too much firepower to simply wrench through. It's time to unleash one more triple-double ultimate secret weapon. Say hello to the Hyper Jump. Ever faithfully asleep, the devs at Insomniac failed the program, of all things, the Controls section of the Options menu. When the Controls menu is entered, Ratchet's current state is reset. If you are in the middle of a hyperstrike, that hyperstrike will be cancelled. Of course, since you're still in midair and not doing a hyperstrike, you're fully capable of doing a hyperstrike. Since the hyperstrike animation gives Ratchet a little bit of height at the start, quickly chaining them together will effectively give you an infinite jump. Abuse this thing to the heavens to jump over each door blocking your way and reach Shell Shock Phase 2. But wouldn't you know it, the big guy himself is also a powerhouse, so rather than fighting him, hyper jump onto the outer ledge. With proper positioning, you'll mostly be safe from attack, but capable of getting in wrench throw, slowly draining Shell Shock's health until it gives up, gets bored, and walks away. With the hyper jump glitch, we'll be able to skip through tons of missions throughout the game. Whenever our goal is to get from point A to point B and there's no ceiling to stop us, it usually closes the gap. And, fun fact, during the final Shell Shock battle, if you hyper jump sequence break, you can spawn multiple Shell Shocks in the game simultaneously. Turns out every phase is literally a different person. Most of these Shell Shocks can be allowed to frolic in peace, the only exception being the Shell Shock residing in the final room. But just like before, he's way too powerful to take head on, and unlike last time, there's no absolute absolutely safe wrench throwing location. However, while nowhere near ideal and definitely not safe, we've still got a solid strategy on the ledge above the door. As long as Shell Shock is close enough for Merc and Green to attack, you can focus on dodging the missiles while they focus on incredibly slowly draining his health bar. After about 40 minutes of carefully jumping back and forth, Shell Shock will finally give up, get bored, and die a painful death. Once the Eventer Tournament is unlocked, you'll also unlock the first set of wrench and bot upgrades. A new set becomes available after unlocking most to the tournament, so always make the pit stop when you get the chance. The tournament itself, and the chunk of the game after, is easy with the hyper jump. Also along the way, this happened. When you head back for the Crusader Tournament, get ready for an immediate extra triple double atomic fudge Sunday of pain. In this arena mission, you absolutely must kill all enemies. Five rounds worth will successively swarm you, many enemies have ranged attacks, there's almost no cover, and the worst part of it all, Merc and Green are completely AWOL. You've got to dismantle this army solo. Rather than just trying to whack every enemy to death with the wrench, you'll instead want to aim for ring outs, giving an instant KO. After about seven hours of grinding, I had almost every single enemy's spawn point memorized, turning this whole thing into a game of whack-a-mole, bopping each enemy back down right after popping up. Round five is the absolute worst, immediately teleporting in a horde of swarmers and gunners and bringing even more in as you try to clear them out. Prioritize the gunners and just forget about ring outs. Turn everything you see as dead as possible as fast as possible. With any luck, you'll graze by just enough bullets to see the challenge complete screen. The reactor boss fight is luckily 50 times more cheesable. Hyper jump up to the level edge, lure him over, and spam the wrench while he fruitlessly cycles through every attack in his arsenal. The Valix belt sports this curious oddity. In one mission, you're supposedly supposed to reach the hover ship, but the mission is officially cleared just by opening the door leading to it. If you hyper jump around, you'll discover the ship is actually pilotable, but it's a one 
one-way ticket. Ratchet is incapable of exiting the ship afterward, and also incapable of ordering Merc and Green to turn the bolt crank, thus making the Get the Hover Ship mission unwinnable if you get the Hover Ship. After clearing that mission the legit way, we head into a 100% required Hover Ship mission that requires us to kill 12 entire groups of enemies. We can trick these enemies into shooting each other, but everyday friendly fire isn't quite enough. Think about it, if you need everybody in the group to kill each other, who's gonna kill the last guy? But don't start fruitlessly attempting to scream just yet, there is just barely technically a feasible solution. A few groups of laser grid manta rays can be found scattered around the level. They aren't legally required kills themselves, and their laser attack is still fully capable of friendly fire. This gives us a method to kill the last member of a handful of these groups, but manta rays can't move too far from their spawn point, and a few groups are completely outside their range. But pay super close attention to enemy bullets. They move in straight lines and don't seem to have any noticeable range limits. This makes it very technically feasible for them to snipe the last member of a neighboring group from the other side of the map, which, let me tell you, is easier said than done. The angles have to match up exactly right, sometimes they'll refuse to move in a viable position to begin with, you'll have to be extra careful to clear out every single group in a very specific order, and you'll have to be double careful not to let the manta rays get caught in the crossfire, or this entire plan could fall apart. After several extremely tedious attempts, I finally managed to thread the golden needle through every single member of every group and finally, finally, finally complete the mission in one hour, 19 minutes. And here I thought we were looking at a half day, Juanita. On Planet Torval is a required hover bike challenge, making us kill all the super fast flying drones circling around the track. They're way too fast to hurt with collision damage and run away in the opposite direction if you try to cut them off. Luckily, they seem to work based on sight. Hide behind a wall along the track, enter first person mode, wait for one to just barely round the corner, and throw out the wrench. It takes about 30 seconds between each hit, but there's no time limit, so it gets the job done. Following completing a hover bike mission on foot, we'll be completing the next on foot mission using the hover bike. There are ridiculous numbers of enemies guarding the bolt cranks. The hover bike will give you the speed and extra health necessary to get in there before the enemies are fully prepared and survive as they try to gun you down. In the Vindicator tournament, we'll unfortunately come up to the part we've all been dreading, a lightning round in which the gimmick has our weapon swapping after each group of enemies. Merc, Green, and the Wrench are all completely absent. I did some experimenting, but while some waves could theoretically be cleared by tricking swarmers into jumping in the lava, that doesn't work on all the other enemies. I did sometimes accidentally trigger a glitch where I was able to use the wrench, but only momentarily, and I honestly have no clue how I triggered it. Without any reliable alternatives, this makes Mission Failed number two. The mission immediately after thankfully only requires you to stay alive for two minutes. It's a little easier. And the Eviscerator boss fight can be cheese just like Reactor, but whatever you do, don't let his trash talk get to you. Immediately on entering Stygia, you're thrust into a forced Landstalker mission, and unfortunately, unlike the others, melee damage isn't enough. The very first checkpoint has no ranged enemies whatsoever, and you're locked in by a barrier whose generators are out of bounds. Any attempts to go out of bounds myself were met with a swift, explosive death. With no other options available to us, we fire our mortar launcher and bank mission failed number three. On planet Meraxis, Merc and Green are locked away, and you're required to take on some of the toughest battles yet seen in the game to rescue them. Thankfully, required is in quotation marks. In the first mission, rather than freeing Merc, you should let him rot and hyper jump over this laser grid to reach the Puma. Once the small handful of enemies surrounding it are dead, the mission is complete, and Merc will spontaneously decide he's not captive anymore in time for the next one. The third mission was, once again, way too difficult for me to even consider playing fair. It took a lot of exploration, but eventually I managed to find a viable hyperjump route and dropped through the ceiling into the room where Green is held captive, taking a few steps backward to officially complete the mission. The final mission is a gigantic arena battle with several waves of highly deadly enemies protecting the switch that lowers Green's cage. But for whatever reason, the completion trigger isn't for winning the battle or for rescuing Green, it's for exiting the building. Thoroughly curb stomp the concepts of honor and trust and jump out the window to make your escape as Green curses your name with his last breath. Head back to the containment suite buy your new upgrades, pretend to apologize to Green, and head into the Liberator Tournament. Right out of the gate is another lightning round that's just as impossible
impossible as the last one for exactly the same reasons, making for Mission Failed number four. But you know what's worse than an obviously impossible mission? One that's obviously possible, just friggin' impossible. And the Mission Accelerator, you have two minutes, 45 seconds to kill 135 enemies. The waves get progressively tougher along the way, use the game's strongest enemy types, and if the avalanche of pain doesn't kill you, it's probably because you played it too safe and let the timer run out. I grinded for, no joke, 15 total hours of attempts on this one mission. I have every single enemy spawn memorized and figured out the stupidest strategies to save microseconds of time. When the fight begins, jet boot to the first group of swarmers, take a few out, then run over to take out the dropship. A few seconds after, run to the far side of the arena to intercept an incoming swarm of melee enemies, hyperstrike through them all simultaneously, and intercept the dropship to take it out ASAP, and hopefully half the gunners jumping out with it, and a second wave of enemies that will spawn in on top of you. With the last gunner dead, head for this spot and start hyperstriking to intercept a scorpion falling from the sky. If you get ridiculously lucky, it and the next scorpion will be close enough together to deal damage to both of them simultaneously. If your spider scent is tingling, do a couple hyper jumps. Each hyper jump will still deal damage, and the scorpion won't be able to hit you if it turns out your magic psychic powers you never knew you had successfully predicted a melee attack. The next wave consists entirely of small groups of swarmers and melee enemies that you should, of course, be murdering before they even exist. The final round consists both of extremely sturdy and dangerous robot zombies and extremely dangerous and sturdy flying hedgehogs. The zombies have ridiculous amounts of health and thus take ridiculous time to kill, but are the most plentiful enemies here on out and thus your only hope of reaching the quota. That said, prioritize the hedgehogs because otherwise you're gonna die, but that said, prioritize the zombies because otherwise you're gonna run out of time, and that said, now you're Swiss cheese, do you see why this is a problem? When killing zombies, do one hyperstrike to launch them, followed by a second hyperstrike that goes above and around their backside. Zombie attacks have ridiculously large range and will probably hit you even in midair if you're jumping in front of them. Landing behind them exploits their blind spot and hopefully keeps you alive. To kill the hedgehogs as fast as possible, constantly spam hyper jumps while hugging them in midair. Each individual hyper jump counts as a separate hyper strike attack, so while it takes forever for us in the real world, in game time, Ratchet is dealing astronomical damage in a matter of seconds. After clearing a bunch of small waves, one final gigantic wave will spawn in, hopefully with about 10 seconds left on the time. Timer. Order Merc and Green to throw out the Ravager, hope they're not too distracted to listen, and pray to every conceivable deity while blindly ripping and tearing as the screen is overwhelmed with robotic viscera, and maybe, just maybe, you will be greeted by those wonderful words, challenge complete. And guess what? While you've certainly made a lot of progress and probably beaten the hardest challenge in the entire game, you're still not out of the woods. The Ace Hard Light boss fight doesn't let Merc and Green join you, and unlike the prior boss fights, Ace isn't stupid enough to follow you to the edge of the arena for the wrench trick. I briefly tried some hyper jump shenanigans, but they were ultimately more trouble than they're worth since his worst attack is still capable of chasing you airborne. You've gotta beat this guy legit. This time, without quotation marks. When he splits off into clones, I recommend taking an aggressive playstyle. He'll stand in place and the clones won't attack immediately, so this moment will let you rack on tons of free damage. Plus, the clones will despawn after reaching certain damage thresholds, letting you do it again soon after. Important to keep in mind, clones are much less likely to shoot you when off screen, so you generally only need to pay attention to those you can see directly or are in the immediate vicinity. Phase 3 and 4's snaking laser attack makes it impossible to stay on ace for more than a couple hyper strikes at a time. If the opportunity presents itself, lead the missile into its own tail to blow it up. If not, circle the arena and attack any clones you come across in the hopes of narrowing down their numbers and or figuring out which one is the real ace. It's worth noting, along the way I encountered a glitch where an ace got himself stuck on one of the lights at the edge of the arena, and during this glitch he refused to spawn in any clones. I was briefly Briefly hopeful this would let me cheese the whole fight, but alas, in Phase 4, he has an invincible force field that only goes down when clones are present, making this glitch useless. It's not gonna be easy, but compared to the last mission, you'll be grinding here for slightly fewer lifetimes. With Ace Hardlight canonically a dead corpse and very not alive, you head into the Ghost Station and officially start the endgame. Be warned, you won't be able to skip directly to the endpoint of the first mission. For some strange reason, presumably those silly Insomniac devs actually believing they're capable of stopping me from cheating, Ratchet is incapable of performing hyper strikes in the empty space leading to the goal. Instead of heading straight there, hyper jump sideways to the nearby grind rail, which you can then safely ride the rest of the way. 
A healthy diet of cheese in the next missions will get you all the way to the Ghost Station's hovership finale. This time, we have to blow up both all the power nodules and all the turrets scattered around the station. The power nodules are the easy part. You can easily leave nearby enemy shots to shoot them all for you. The turrets, however, are going to take a lot more doing, though thankfully we won't need to do quite as fancy sniping shenanigans as last time. Almost every turret has one or two nearby sniper enemies capable of friendly fire, but once again, you'll have to think carefully about every move you make. Always fly well above the turrets to help prevent them from shooting the surrounding enemies. The first handful of turrets you kill will spawn some laser shooting stingrays, and using those is absolutely necessary to kill at least one other turret nearby. If you plan it all out properly, the only remaining turret to worry about is this one. An invisible level boundary pushes you back when you try to get near it. Luckily, if you majigger yourself just right, you can get yourself wedged between the force field and the turret. After about a hundred trips back and forth to the healing pad, you'll eventually wear every turret down and complete the final hovership mission entirely weaponless. Thus can you begin the final final gauntlet on the way to the final boss fight. The first three missions each have a nine minute time limit, so latte strats aren't gonna cut it. In the first mission, you can hyper jump up to the floating platform room to skip half the level. After reaching the final room, you'll have to order Merc and Green to plant explosives at four separate points while the surrounding enemies bombard you. I managed to keep myself safe long enough by hiding behind the generator, hyper jumping up in the air when things started to get too hairy. The second generator, however, is way more fortified. It's surrounded by multiple flying hedgehogs, and in my experience, they tend to start aiming at Ratchet's face instantaneously. While trying to repeat my hyper-jumping strategy, I accidentally found an even better one. Collision stops existing near the top of the generator, letting you fall inside it. Enemy shots can't get in, but you can still move around and throw your wrench out. However, Merc and Green were still getting bombarded, and my wrench wouldn't reach the hedgehogs. So it seemed as good a time as any to throw out the Ravager to clear out most of the room, letting them more safely blow up the generator and me with it. The third generator's enemies were thankfully nowhere near as deadly, letting us once again blow ourselves up into the final battle with Gleam and Vox. While he has a massive health bar, we've got the advantage. He flies around in the air, and all of his attacks only deal damage on the ground. After some tedious hyperjump combos, he'll enter Phase 2. Normally, ranged enemies would spawn for Phase 2, but they ended up not spawning for me. I'm guessing all their spots were still taken by the melee enemies from Phase 1 left back on the ground, sitting back and drinking a latte while watching Vox fruitlessly try to swat the furry hummingbird buzzing in his face. With the Vox Network finally cancelled, the Ratchet Deadlocked Wrench Only Run is officially mission failed like four times. If you'd like to try the run yourself, it's highly recommended. As I alluded before, Deadlocked is my favorite Ratchet & Clank game, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out it's also my favorite wrench-only run, featuring tons of ridiculously satisfying challenge and tons of ridiculously satisfying cheese. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including all the bugs UV has killed, Andrew Seibert, Mrs. Heckman, Leslam, RB Drox, On Zero, Chris Nay, Alexander Botkin, On You, Akrira, Chosen Muffin, Anon42, The Bass Singer, Vincent Hall, Vincent YT, Alex Nelson, Yellow Alert, Lively Leader, The Quacky Gamer, Lady Ashley, Luminescent Dragon, Jace Nilges, Backsoid, Z Master, David 20 Covers, Praetor, Vaith. Whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Cabal on Mars, so let's get to taking out their command one by one. Valis Tark, from what I can gather, he commands the siege. Imperial Wan Tank outside of Wubicon, he's Wu protected, but with the white team, we can punch through those defenses. Take the Rory Kelly, Lane Robert Leishman, Goopy Fella, Blake Long, Queen Sapphire, Crustacean Creep, Liddy Kitty, Plum Sweater, Cam the Can One, Nathaniel Kalita, Sander Kozak, Celestial Cookie, Eight Bit Mistreatus, Procrastinating Destiny, Epic Evan Nine Two One, Alex Likes to Eat, Yield Four, and Super Davio, Ace of Hearts, Who Random Goy, Misfunctional Jorb, KK, Gussio, Salister Echoes, John Frary, Fooey. Assuming someone answered my rock paper scissors call from last time in the next video, we shall make our plays. Zo, Epic Antos, Multicore, Brandon Jessup, Aaron Bailey, The Green Scorpion, Game Champs has trans rights or Human Rights, Boom Boxy, John Miller, Star Captain Eli Shaba of Clan Ghost Bear, SNS Main, Lero Rario, Dino Nerd Ghost, Christopher Gunderson, Curbs D50, Damian R, Yap Alonzo, Wave It, Platypu 115, You Broke the Wrong Crate, Test Fail, Dance Arios, This Challenge Was a Tatas, Lusos, You Gotta Have a Very High IQ to Watch Game Champ 3K, Their Humor Is Ludicrously Subtle and Without a Grasp of Theoretical Gaming, Chronosanthium, What's That Noise, Wuro 25, Blue Moon Von Idaho, Brit Fake, Drawn by AJ's Haha -ha Funny Meme Name, Chroma, The Nonchalant Nacho, Bragger Jester, Andrew D. Wood, Kid, Very Gucci, James Simon, Poopy Whoopy, I'm Made a Stinky Winky, Blue Boo, Faby, Officer Slard, Caden Bass, West 450, Riley Anderson, Avelium, Paul Rosso, Chenzo, Neo Sandman 4040, Zip Agle, Arcombs, Robbie Cohenstrom. I will think of something funny for Game Chan 3000 to say that One Night 5, Dadswell is canon, Mars Becker, Salty Sweet, and I would love to play the world's slowest game of rock, paper, scissors. Next episode, we will both make our call. Let me know how much this video sucks and how to improve in the comments below. For once, Steel Game Master hasn't already done this one, but God knows you've already commented the contrary anyway, and get out of my house.